This is Heather Beth, live at the Rebel Kings of Oakland show at the White Horse in Oakland, California, on a sexy, hot, sultry Oakland Wednesday evening, here with amazing drag performer Mickey Finn. Mickey, how you doing? I'm doing well. How are you doing? I'm doing awesome. Thank you for asking. I'm really excited to be interviewing you. You're one of my favorite performers, and I just think you're amazing. (laughs) Ah, shucks. Ah, shucks. I feel like we should get really close to this microphone, though, to like okay, like lean in so you don't have to pass it back and forth. I'm into that. Let's just let's just do that. Yes. Okay, an so. intimate interview. <laughs> an intimate interview. <laughs> okay, so um, so oh my gosh, I have so many questions for you. Okay, so how long have you been performing drag? I keep losing track, to be honest. Um, yeah, like half a year less than Jack, I think. Oh, half a year less than so, our Dante Damone. Yeah, wow. I, think I started in like 2008, maybe. So maybe nine years. You've been with it for a he minute. Said nine years, then it's been eight. So. No wonder <laughs> I was so head. like impressed by your performance the first time I saw you. You had oh, some, some experience. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Okay. Um, so tell us a little bit about, maybe tell us a little bit about your, your character or set of characters that you like to do when you perform. Mm, okay. Um, I definitely try and make Mickey Finn a little bit of a chameleon. Um, mm. That was actually one of the best compliments somebody ever said about my performing was Mickey Finn raised by a pack of wild chameleons. <gasps> and I was so charmed. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> um, because I used to really enjoy playing all over the gender spectrum and like uh-huh. coming up to people in a you know girl mode after I'd been in boy mode and they wouldn't recognize me the next day. They wouldn't recognize me in the same show. It That's was just really entertaining. Amazing. I love it. Uh, so yeah, numbers where I like cross the gender divide within the number are maybe my favorites. Ah. Um, but I also often, within a show, I'm going back and forth. Okay. Um, I, I've noticed that. It's been really fun to, <laughs> to notice that, just as a as a lay audience person. So, yeah. yeah. Um, how did you initially get into drag? So I initially, um, let's see, I initially started trying to get into the performing scene via burlesque. And I made a very embarrassing video audition for a queer burlesque troupe that I have looked at in years past, a year since. And uh, <laughs> I've actually I've, I've reworked some of the numbers since. But my, yeah, I was I didn't know what I was doing. <laughs> well, I think that's that's okay though. I mean, yeah, I mean I'm feeling somewhere. right. We all start somewhere, right? Um, a weird fact that is completely unrelated to drag or sex positivity per se is that I also am a knitter and I teach people to knit. And I always tell people you have to complete one shitty first hat. Oh, yeah. You have to complete one shitty first hat before you can continue on because if you're always waiting to make the perfect thing, then you're never, you're just going to be worrying about the perfection and completely undoing the thing and not just letting yourself get up there and do it. I mean, I suppose it may be a little bit different with performance because once you're on stage, you're sort of already on stage. You can't undo the hat and then redo it. I don't know. Do you run off stage and cry? I'm not sure. <laughs> there, there are definitely ones where you're like, wow, that could have gone better. And I just learned a lot right now. Um, Learning. But there's also still just so much adrenaline and like endorphins, like like a runner's high. Yeah. comes after performing that even when it falls apart, you're just like, okay, okay, I did it. I did it. <laughs> and you're like high on the endorphins. Yes. Um, Dante was telling me earlier in the other interview that I did that, um, that no matter how long he's been doing this, like for 10 years, right? Every every single show before you go up, you get that like oh nervousness, tummies, the stage fright. Does that totally. experience? Do you have that same experience? Absolutely. Yeah. Um, less so if I'm just being a prop in somebody's number, then there's less of that. Like I wanted to go well, but it wasn't my creative baby so mm-hmm. much. You're like less attached to it, maybe, yeah. or yeah. or like more confident in my ability to fulfill somebody else's vision. Sure. But like when it's my vision on the line. Then right. there's lots of there's a lot yeah, of like attachment to it. Yeah, <laughs> cool. I like the way that we're having like really good eye contact during this interview. Like I don't know, it's really fun for me. I'm, I'm enjoying it. That's okay. all. Just wanted to share that. <laughs> also, I just kind of wanted to make you laugh because I like your laugh. But anyway, um, <laughs> <laughs> for those listening on the radio, Mickey Finn is blushing right now. Yes, yes. <laughs> you can't see it, but it's lovely. Um, okay, 
so you said you've been performing around eight or eight and a half years. Uh, if like Jeff that? said ten, then nine for me. Oh, nine. Okay, okay. Yeah. Gotcha. I didn't want to. I don't want to underestimate. Sorry, nine years. Okay. Oh, but um, sort of a, a side of that story was I started performing burlesque, and I came to the drag show. I came in drag. I was the only yes. audience member in drag. Oh, so, that's so hot. That's like Rocky Horror. Yeah, well, all of the drag kings were like, oh, are you performing tonight? Like, everybody thought I was in the yes! show. Yes! I was so shy and so embarrassed, though, that I, like, didn't come back for another year. Oh! <laughs> I so you so could have been sh- performing for 10 years if yeah. shyness had not... Yeah, and I remember, like, watching, you know, Jack and whoever back in the day mm-hmm. being so starstruck. Uh-huh. But I had to come around through really highly choreographed femme performance before I could be confident enough to come back around to more improvisational masculine performance. Interesting. Because that was initially much more challenging for me. That's really interesting. So the the piece of feeling choreographed and then performing femme somehow felt more comfortable for you to start with. Yeah, I felt like even though I was not femme in real life, like I was, you know, I'd (laughs) oh my god, the other the other burlesque dancers must have had it with me because I was just like, how the fuck do we put on these false eyelashes? My hairspray's clogged. What do I do? <laughs> you know, I was just like lost performing femininity. Oh my god. But um, I still kind of knew what it was supposed to be, you know, like magazines, whatever. I, I had an idea of how I was supposed to present that work. Right, we get these, these ideas like pounded into our head, right? Yeah. Generally speaking, but um, yeah. I still can't do a smoky eye, even though I was assigned oh female at birth and have identified as a girl ever since then, or woman, but yeah, uh-huh. there's 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 some societal stuff, and then there's some like levels of skill involved, too, so yes. you learned about the levels of skill doing that. Exactly. Okay, <laughs> cool. But um, performing masculine was so much more intimidating to me, because uh, I didn't, I felt like I didn't have anything to go on, you know, so it, it took a little bit of Know, baby steps and, and gentle yeah. coaching. And, yeah. yeah, that makes sense, right? It's like it was not something that you've been told ever since you were born. Like this is how to do this, right? Exactly. Right, and it's not something I ever paid attention to those cultural messages. Mm-hmm. So like, I've never, probably never read a men's magazine where they talk about how to tie your tie or break your pants right. or whatever. Break your pants? Oh yeah, it's the number of folds over your um, the front of your shoe. What? <laughs> okay, I'm learning things. Learning things. Always learning things. What is this? I'm probably using the wrong terminology, but so if you're wearing pants, there's that bit where it kind of like wrinkles up over the front of your shoe, uh-huh. you know, because your pants yeah, yeah, kind of go yeah. over your shoe and down to your heel. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So however many folds has something to do with the break of the pants. And wow. I'm, I'm really explaining this very poorly. <laughs> No, but it's fascinating. Like, it's something I'm totally going to Google now, right? Um, okay, so being entered and in, being inducted into the world of masculinity. <laughs> right. And uh, attention to little details because there's not a lot of, like, over the top flashiness. Right. Necessarily not the way drag queens are. I right. Mean, we do. We still, like, sure. glitter and rhinestone and, like, a yes. crazy, but. Just your average day-to-day masculine presentation. Yes. Kind of bland. Totally. I see. (laughs) Yeah, I know. I I hear what you're saying. Yeah. But, and then also the cool thing about your performance um, is that you get to kind of ride that line and blur those lines Mm -hmm. and kind of like put different feet in different world. Okay, by the way, I like this song. I'm a little obsessed with it. It's my summer song. Okay, I'm done. Um, (laughs) Um, so, So it's been fun for you to kind of just like be in both of those spaces. Okay. Yeah, very yeah, cool. I find where that Venn diagram overlaps a little bit. Yeah, I totally. Can slide in between. And then also, like maybe the idea that it's that it's not like singularly in one bubble or another, but it's like we can mess up the bubble and pop the bubble. I don't know. I do gender stuff. I also work with gender stuff in my day job too. So, yeah. um, so we have sort of danced around this question, but I want to know for you, what do you think is the most fun thing about doing drag? Hmm. Um, gosh. I think uh, I tend not to do many solo numbers. Um, that's a lot more challenging for me. Mm-hmm. But I really like, I, I'm sort of the only one with 
one of the only ones with any kind of formal dance training or like group dance okay. training. So I end up being the de facto choreographer. Oh, really? <laughs> the, oh, look at numbers. this behind the scenes. Mickey Finn making it happen. Yeah. Um, okay. So oftentimes someone will come to me with a song and just be like, what are we going to do? This no. is a good fact to know. Because yeah. I'm going to have another question for you in a minute that I feel like this is going to help with. But please continue. Sure. Um, and so I, I have this, you know, little like three column graph where I put like the, the time stamp and the lyrics and the choreography into this grid and um, get kind of systematic about it and try and like come up with an art. You are nerding the fuck out on I drag. I'm so nerdy about choreography. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so there's three columns and then what happens? And then, yeah, so I, I try to come up with a story arc and assign different parts to who's lip syncing where and like where we can each go off and do our own individualist stylistic thing. Yeah, we can come together and do something synchronized that, you know, brings it all together for a minute. How f- okay, now I'm like looking at the, that, the piece that you did, the act that you did tonight, and I'm like, oh, that's so interesting. They're obviously, well, that song very much has a clear story arc to it. Yeah. Can yeah. we talk about the, the piece that you did tonight? Sure, yeah. Okay, so it was the Teenage Dirtbag song, yes. right? <laughs> and you were, like you said, um, su- uh, not a supporting. You weren't the only one. You were, you were kind of like the cheerful reason for the season of the song, but you were not the main character, I guess. But let's right. talk about your act tonight. Uh, so it was done partially as a favor to a friend of mine who's been off stage for a long time. And partially as a favor to the world because he is such a good performer. And <laughs> partially as a favor to the yes. Oh my God, the audience misses Love him it. so much. And I'm so glad to have him back. So, so do you want to talk about who you performed with and the song? And yeah, uh, this is Mitchell Brothers, um, who is just the sweetest like baby face charmer, you know. <laughs> um, and yeah, you know, for various reasons, he like he took a hiatus from stage for a while, mm-hmm. and needed a little encouragement to, to get his mojo back. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't think he needed any encouragement, but he felt like, you sure, know, sure, sure. that was the next step. And, uh, yeah, it was really pretty easy for me. I was, like, the girl prop in the song, and he did all the work. He did all the lip syncing. I just sort of was the, the thing for him to sing about. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, and then our other friend, uh, Marissa Thagatron, who's also performed yes. with Mitchell way back in the day came in and was the, the, the heel of the story, the right. douchey boyfriend. So, so good. Yeah, so fun. Played up her characters. And there wasn't any, <laughs> except for that one little dance where we did, there wasn't any choreography, but um, right. yeah, it's all. But, but you, you kind of helped like map out like how things would go with the performance? Or, or Not was especially, that to be honest. Vision? It was a number that he had done years and years and years ago, okay. and so he... Ah. Had the overall story arc in his head, and I just kind of tweaked it here and there. Like, okay. You know, here's maybe the timing that we should do this on. And, That's awesome. Uh, here's how we'll characterize this part. So it was really fun. It very much stood out. I liked it a lot. Uh-huh. So <laughs> thank you. I'll pass on the compliment. He was so nervous. Oh my god, it was amazing. It was very memorable and very fun. Um, so let's see. What else did I want to ask you? Um, oh, uh, I, so I crowdsourced some questions on my Facebook page. Um, and one of the questions that was told for me to ask you is, Mickey Finn, why are you so cool? <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> she just took a drink from her. <laughs> they just took a drink from their. He just took a drink from his. Z just took a drink from Zier. As you can see, Mickey has interchangeable pronouns. Um, Mickey just took a drink, so is thinking about the answer to this question. Why are you so cool? Oh, dear. <laughs> um, oh, okay. No, I have an answer. Oh, yes! Um, because I was so stage fighty, one of my big missions now is to lure novice performers onto the stage. And so... I wouldn't say it's exactly predatory, but I definitely have an eye out for people who look like they might be interested in performing or come up to me and are a little bit like, so, no. I have somebody in mind that might be interested in performing. Oh, yeah? Yeah, but we're not going to mention their name, but I think we both know who that is. Are they someone that I might have lured onto stage for a small backup part before? <laughs> <laughs> so you That's have an eye for start. this. You have an eye for this. Yes. Um, so yeah, I don't know, I just, like, this is one of the most friendly, um, you know, um, 
what's the word? It's we've got a great audience here. We're a really welcoming, supportive space. So this is one of the best places to get started. Mm -hmm. I think. Okay, that's perfect because that kind of leads into my next question. Is <clears throat> folks were also wondering if they were interested in getting started as a drag performer, how would they go about doing that? What what are the like steps? Break it down. Let's hear it. Yeah. Uh, if you're in the Bay Area, just come to our show. Talk to us afterwards. And Who's we us? Will... Oh, the Rebel Kings of Oakland. Yes. How does a person find the Rebel Kings of Oakland? We are on Facebook. We have a web page. Okay. So it really will just direct you to our Facebook. Okay. Um, but we perform first and third Wednesdays at the Historic, one of the oldest continuously operating gay bars in the United States. First and third Wednesdays, folks. You heard it here at the bar. What is it called? The White Horse. The White Horse Inn in oh, Oakland, God. California. Come on down. See a show. Check it out. And then what happens? After they see a show, what then? Come talk to us afterwards. Uh, let us know what you're interested in. If you want us to maybe give you a bit part to get used to being on stage. If you uh, have a song that's inspired you that you just don't know how to take the next yeah. step with um, At one point, we did a monthly drag workshop. We're all a really a monthly workshop. Now. It was not a workshop so much as just a drop in. Okay. We hung out here in the back room. Anybody that wanted to come work on their shit came, and we'd either like make costumes or we'd teach a little dance move or we'd run through whatever their idea was. That sounds like a super awesome like low Someday pressure we'll way to kind of connect but that doesn't happen on the regular anymore it's more just like piecemeal like right, right. talk to the performer after okay okay so folks you heard it here first if you're interested in drag you have to ha at least have the wherewithal to like a Approach one of the drag performers. I highly recommend ordering some delicious alcoholic beverages from the bar. Um, that, that, you know, give you a little bit of liquid courage there. Um, don't get too sloppy, right? But but then you can approach someone after the show, right? We're not scary. We don't bite unless asked really nicely. You That's only bite consensually? I love it. That's great. We're really big on consent here at the Brown Chicken Brown Cow Podcast. Um, so on that note, though, um, if you're listening to this from, I don't know, New York City or Austin, Texas or somewhere else in the world, you can also email us. Okay. Uh, the Rebel Kings of Oakland at gmail.com, and we love giving out tips. Sometimes we do workshops at schools and colleges. Really? Yeah. I did not know that. Okay, so the Rebel Kings of Oakland with the, the, the in it yeah. at gmail.com. Exactly. You heard it here first, folks. I'm really enjoying this, like, being a media interviewer person. Okay. Um... What else? So, oh, here's a question that I could have asked for at the beginning of the interview, but, you know, we like to queer up the order of things. Yeah. What is a drag king? Let's talk about that. What uh, is a drag king? Yeah. Somebody that, asked that on, on Facebook. So. That's a totally legit question. The super simple stripped down answer is that it's the opposite of a drag queen, which, if you take it in the way society understands that, that's generally... A drag queen is generally a um, assigned male at birth person performing feminine, and okay. so therefore a drag king would be assigned female at birth person performing masculine. Okay. But we really like to push the boundaries of everything here. Yeah, so, y'all do. Yeah, we have um, queer drag kings, we have straight drag kings, we have femme drag kings, we have butch drag kings, we have nice. trans drag kings, cis drag kings. Uh, we have faux queens, so we have like assigned male at birth um, performing. We haven't we haven't had that one in a while, but we have on stage before had people who um, Jeannie, uh, my ex partner, who really helped me get into drag, was this amazing drag queen, and she would do this incredible gender fuckery where she would perform as a drag. Queen performing as a drag king and just what? That's amazing. I need to see that. Oh, so good. <laughs> that sounds awesome. Is there anywhere that folks folks who want to see like that type of performance can? See? I mean, obviously here at at the White Horse in. Well, let's just leave it at that. At the White Horse in in Oakland, California, the first and third Wednesday of the month. Um, technically, our podcast is based out of Sacramento, oh, and right. one of our sponsors is the Midtown Moxies, who are a burlesque troupe that perform in Sacramento. Awesome. Um, but here in, in Oakland, it's you know it's a little bit of a different like geographic area, it's a different market. So we're happy to promote you know the Bay Area shows as well. I don't we know where I was going with Sacramento all that. In a while. I was just, well, you we should come up. Occasionally um, come up, yeah. What was really cool was that when I was putting this stuff out on social media, um, it sparked a conversation about, like, well, where are the drag kings in Sacramento? And so it kind of started a conversation about that and where the regular shows are. So I would love to have you up um, to check out some of our drag king shows, some of our variety yeah. shows. 
um, at some of our local delightfully queer establishments. That'll be fun sometime. Uh, you don't have to consent to that. No pressure. We could talk I, about it later off the mic. Yeah. You would? Okay, cool. I'd be into it. Um, but yeah, oftentimes there's not enough of a concentration of drag kings to have their own show. <laughs> so often you'll find one or two drag kings at a drag queen show. That's sort of what it seemed like to me. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Right um, here we have so many. We have like uh, Dandy, there's the SF Drag King show, there might be another one starting regularly, mm-hmm. there's Kingdom, there's so many Drag King shows. Awesome. So good. That's so cool. So obviously we're in the Bay Area, right? The yes. sex positive, <laughs> queer, fuckery capital of the world. Um, but yes, also we have some, some stuff in Sacramento as well. So, um, But I love it. I just love that this is like a thing that's taking off. It makes me so happy. So. Let's see. What do you wish people knew about drag? What do you think, like, there's maybe some misconceptions or the things that you wish people knew? Ooh. Hmm. Ooh, this could get, this could get into, <laughs> this could get tough. Um, and this maybe isn't quite answering your question, but one of the things that is challenging is I find a lot of people, um, it seems like trans people in particular are a little bit resistant to coming to drag shows. Not as many people are aware of drag king shows, but drag queen shows specifically. There's this whole rift between trans women and drag queens. And it, it, would that be because like it might feel to trans women like drag might be making a mockery of their gender experience, but they're, even though it's like, making a mockery of society's gender standards but it could feel that way to trans women or trans folks right and I definitely can't speak for trans women sure, um, sure. but yeah there's there's just a lot of fraught uh, feelings yeah there so that makes sense I think I'd like to figure out how to this isn't what I wish people knew about drag this is what I wish I knew about drag was how to uh mend that rift and make performances that people find offensive more inclusive and more um, interesting woke I guess for lack of a better like <laughs> yeah <laughs> yeah totally. um, more socially aware that makes sense yeah well and I think like just like anything else um, we're all getting like so super serious here which is fine I think it's good to be serious <laughs> and then light but um um, again, I'm a cisgender person. I've um, been working with the trans community for, for years as well. I mean, my experience just w- with trans folks, just like any other population of folks, is that there's more diversity of experiences within the group of folks than there is difference between, like, a trans person and a, you know, cisgender person oh, in general, sure. right? So we're, you know, definitely we're not speaking for all trans folks, Um but we're we're we're, meant, we're noticing that that for some folks that's not it it's not a pleasant experience, um, and for other folks they're like fuck yeah bring it on let's let's gender fuck right yeah. so and for sure we've had uh, trans women performing alongside drag queens and mm-hmm. doing their less kind of routines mm-hmm. and I feel like here the community is a little bit tighter in some ways so we can have a lot of interesting overlap mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. which I really enjoy <laughs> and you'd like to see more of that uh, yeah yeah. Yeah, cool. In a way that honors everyone's experience. Yeah. Exactly. Inclusivity, you said? Yeah. Okay, I like that. Cool. Um, let's see. What else did I want to ask you? Okay, so, oh, another related question to sort of like how, why are you so cool is, um, is it hard to be so awesome? <laughs> um, yes. <laughs> Could you, okay, here, are you ready? Here's my, my I'm... I'm a counselor in my day job, so here's my counselor question. Say more about that. Oh, my God. <laughs> Open-ended questions. Sure, sure. Well, it's definitely tricky for all of us. You know, we all have, a lot of us have day jobs. Um, a lot of us have a million other things to do. I look at my calendar sometimes, and I work during the day, and then every single night is taken by a rehearsal, a show, mm. uh, something, a something. So the logistics are part of what makes it hard to be awesome. Yes, okay. definitely. Um, yeah, time time to rehearse, time to choreograph, time to get your costumes together. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. But okay. It's, it's a fun kind of work. It's a fun kind of work. It's a labor of love. Yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. we don't get paid much because it's got to be a labor of love. You get them sweaty dollars thrown at you. I hear there's like a really sexy person who like runs around and picks up your 
crumpled up dollar bills. I don't. This is true. I mean, I don't. That's what I just what I hear. I don't know. <laughs> um, so like the stage person or something like that. Okay. That is our long tradition of tip monitor. Tip monitor. Yes. Oh, is that what that position is called? It used to be someone picked up from the audience. Oh. But part of the deal was that we would give them a free drink. And inevitably, the tip monitor would get a little bit trashed, would wander off, wouldn't come back and pick the tips. <laughs> oh, so no. Somebody kind of more more in the group, a steady, like, reliable. Regular. Okay. Okay. This person's, like, sort of like a para-performer, or, like, they're, like, a... Yeah, a stage panther. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Love it. <laughs> Love it. Okay. Okay, very cool. So, um, here you heard it here first, folks. If you want to get involved with, with a drag troupe, maybe volunteer to be their steady sweaty dollar bill and underwear picker upper I don't know <laughs> okay um, um, so another question that I was that I was uh, asked to find out from you mm. is where can I get a good binder ah. so um, let's let's translate for folks who might be listening and be like what is I don't understand I just went to Target and I got it and I put binder paper in it and it had lines and it was college Trapper ruled keeper. and I was writing right trapper <laughs> We just high fived about trapper keepers. That just happened. Um, <laughs> I was supposed to bring mine tonight. I have like a 1992 trapper keeper. Is it, it Lisa Frank? Bring. Wait, but is it, it is Lisa, not Frank? Lisa Frank? But it is oh my god, that color of palette. That's amazing. I love it. You should just not sell that on eBay. I was going to say sell it on eBay, know. but no, that's priceless. That is priceless. <laughs> okay, getting back on topic. A binder is uh, something that either trans men or folks who are assigned female at birth who have breasts who need to kind of like rein that shit in, or right? Trans Might women wear. Aren't ready to reveal their transition. Okay, yet. there yeah. we go. Tra- yeah. Right. So Often folk, overlooked. <laughs> people with human bodies that have more chest than they would like to reveal publicly. Yes. Let's put it that way. Precise. <laughs> right. Um, so, actually, Dante kind of gave a cool history of, like, well, we back in my day, we had to use ace bandages and whatever. Like, he, he was like, I didn't use ace bandages, but I used this other type of thing. But, um, so now that we know what a binder is, something that constricts your chest, where can folks get a good quality binder? Do you know? The best I can answer is the internet. Okay. I okay. actually am blessed with a very small chest that, like, I don't even really need to bind often. I can get away with none at all, depending on what shirt I'm wearing, and I love that. <laughs> it's really great. Um, I will occasionally use an ace bandage, okay, because it's easy to find. It's at Walgreens. Okay. I've heard that um, you can also use back support. Like there's these velcro oh. lower back support things. Interesting. Okay. Kind of wrap around and elastic. It might have been what Dante was talking about. I'm not sure, but anyway, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, but they do, like, technology has progressed so amazingly. There's these really high-quality mesh elastic binders uh-huh. in all sizes and all colors. Cool. Yeah. All sizes and colors, that sounds very body positive, inclusive yes. of various <laughs> different body types and sizes. Very Yeah, cool. they finally okay. caught on to the different, like, skin tone things. <laughs> right? What a concept. Not everybody yeah. is white. What? <laughs> what? 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 Um, also, I really liked the fact, and I, you know, I get that it's contextual for, for the performance, but I also just wanted to highlight the fact that you said you are blessed with a small chest, and I just wanted to like appreciate that because I think it runs counter to some like cultural norms, and I'm just wondering what you think about that. Right. Um, yeah, I think there was a really brief time in like seventh grade where I wanted bigger boobs, and then since then I've just been like, oh my god, I love my exquisite miniatures. Oh my god, that's <laughs> lovely. Okay, I feel like that's a good note to wrap it up on. Also, there's the Tracy Chapman like lesbian slow dance song happening right now, and I think that I need to we either have to run off. we might have to go like go dance to this song. Um, so anything else that you would like to tell us about, tell us a little bit about Rebel Kings of Oakland. We, you told us about that already. Um, anything else that you would like to say? Anything else that you wish I would have asked you in this interview? Mm, oh, that's a good question. Oh, gosh. I don't know. <laughs> I'm sure it'll come to me as soon as we go slow dance. That's okay. Let's go slow dance. This sounds great. We can do a, a, a follow up to this interview if we right. need to. But let's go do like the seventh grade slow dance where we like keep Jesus in between us because that yes. would just be really fun for me. Does that sound good? <laughs> Absolutely. All right. Thank you so much for this interview. You're awesome. My pleasure. Nikki Finn signing off. Heather Beth Woodford signing off. Brown chicken, brown cow. Brown chicken, brown cow. This is fun. Brown chicken, brown cow. Brown chicken, brown cow.
Take it back. Take it back.